sticking with technology here so if you see a helicopter trying to offer services as an air taxi here we have a, a house on wheels so to speak uh, a company not a company a group of students uh, in a university is offering solar technology by offering it a uh, house on wheels so to speak so the article here as arstechnica.com so oh wait what happened here so here you can see that the creators of a self-sustaining house on wheels as i mentioned so this was built by a group of students in netherlands so planning to bring their solar powered vehicle uh, across uh, going to spain so that's a 3000 kilometer trek and obviously to increase the interest of people with regards to you know uh what do you call this uh, whether you know people or investors would be inclined to help uh, grow this segment since obviously vehicles is important for people to travel from one place to another but the problem here is the adoption from regular combustible engine to let's say electric vehicle uh, solar powered or even hydro so you know has to be feasible because at the end of the day when you know looking for a better alternative for gas powered uh, engine for for uh, ev vehicles is the battery capability because how do you charge it quickly and i think solar power has the same issue here and obviously you know sun is a perpetual source of energy but obviously with some limitations because at night you cannot use it as effectively and then even during daytime if there are clouds covering the sky so it's not getting direct sunlight then you know there are still limitations so how do you uh, overcome those obstacles and you know just looking at the photo here if you think about it if they are able to you know uh, face those challenges and people would be more inclined even i would be inclined to adopt it and in terms of battery capability storing capability so that you know you don't have to worry about charging it again so uh, obviously we haven't reached that mark but obviously innovating in terms of what they're doing here uh you know is is important as well here so uh, they're calling it the stella vita so they're they were made uh, at the Eindhoven University of Technology uh, so they're a solar team composing of 22 members uh, who created a solar powered family car called Stella Lux and obviously uh, based on their success uh, there were excess capability here so, so, so the device that they created uh, could power other electric vehicles because it has so much energy left which is good right but the question here is what other ventures can they go after so which is what they did here with the Stella Vita uh, looking for ideas to you know what can they power and obviously the vehicle is one of the more uh, common devices that we have that you know we use often to travel from one place to another here which brings us the uh, Stella Vita Loca okay so the vehicle here as you can see is aerodynamic it's a teardrop shape uh, and then you can see the solar powered uh, panels on top of it and sport a series of solar panels on its roof and then it has additional roofings uh, that slides up when stationary so let's see that part so yeah there you go so you can clearly see here of what it looks like and then uh making it easier to stand inside and you know cook or sleep so it gives you more space so to speak and then the panels can also fold outward to increase their surface area to as much as 17 and a half to uh, 17 and a half uh, square meters which is not bad now the interesting part here is its mileage obviously at the end of the day you know one of the main issues for adopting you know a different type of technology for vehicles is its mileage now ideally here it mentions that it can travel as far as 730 kilometers or 450 miles on a sunny day now obviously you know conditions changes varied from day to day and you know uh, that's a concerning thing could vary so from 450 as low as how much could be three 400 300 or even 200 so uh, addressing those problems would be key i think 
storing those solar-powered uh, cells is important so that you don't uh, miss an opportunity. So let's say if it's full battery, so it's continuously charging just like your phone if it's plugged to an outlet and then it stops up to certain if it reaches full capacity and then if it depletes and then it tries to charge again and so forth. I don't know if that would work, but you know, finding ways is uh, how to solve this issue is a key factor here. Anyway, uh, the vehicle's battery can be charged to full, uh, which is problematic, can take two to three days, which is, you know, uh, if you're stuck in the middle of the road and you have to wait for two to three days, I think that's not going to be practical here. So finding ways how to store the battery so that it can last for however, however length or distance that you're going to use the vehicles here. And then obviously the advantage of this vehicle if it can be done properly or implemented properly is uh, you can treat it like a home away from home like a Winnebago so to speak. Uh, it has can put in a bed, a fridge, a toilet, even a couch or even a small cooking area here. So you know it could be a mobile house literally speaking here. Now obviously uh, according to one of the engineers uh, uh, you have to choose how you use your energy and don't since you don't have endless energy which is one of the main downsides of having this type of technology early on since it's still it hasn't still been fully formed the idea or how to address those key problems mentioned earlier but once we get to the point that they can address those you know one of those main issues i think more people will is willing to adopt here obviously resourcing those technologies uh in terms of cost is one thing and then addressing the battery issues, then the fast charge, similar to how the EV vehicles are dealing with those issues. I think if they can, you know, somehow meld it, make it a hybrid of sorts, solar powered and uh, even, you know, electric powered would be nice. As long as we get the desired result, which is, you know, a functioning vehicle that you don't have to worry. Uh, if it's perpetual, wouldn't it be nice that someday you'll be driving a car, you're not worried about energy anymore. Whether it's be electric powered, maybe the roads are electrified so that it can be charged continuously. And then as an option, it can be solar powered. So there are different ways to store energy here. But anyway, according to Ter Horse, as mentioned, the vehicle could theoretically reach the market in five. So it's still a few years away before you'll see it for you know public consumption. They also stated that we have technology to make those kinds of automobiles. But consumers will need to warm up to the idea, which is, you know, a key component here. So adoption is critical here and obviously making those types of unique designs may be problematic because if someone is not familiar with how it looks, just like how, you know, electric vehicles are trying to design to mimic or look like a regular vehicle or combustible engine, it's a big daunting task. So aesthetics is important as well as the uh, internals components of a vehicle here. So we'll see if you know if the solar-powered concept uh, alternative for vehicles would be viable sometime in the future.